Welcome everyone. Today we have Dalma Chai, Dr. Dalma, Dr. Dalma Chai with us from Koch University, who's gonna talk about the challenges of co-designing geographical visualizations and how she overcame them. Uh, she's, she has graduated from, uh, she has finished her PhD in Koch University at Koch University's Design Society and Technology, Pro Design Technology and Society program. And she's currently a postdoctoral researcher in the Pop Makina project that is about uh, community collaborations to create local circular economies. I leave the floor to Damla. Thank you very much for accepting our invitation. Thank you for inviting me and thank you for the introduction. So uh, jumping right in. Yes, so as Yekta said, uh, today I will talk about um, the work I did for my PhD, partly, uh, which involved designing geographical visualizations um, collaboratively. So what do we mean by visualizations? I'm sure you uh, came across in your daily life as well, but uh, it's the uh, general term for graphic representations of data in a very general sense. And um, it's used for many things. It's used for analysis, used for exploration, communication, if you have a message to communicate, even empowerment, uh, when you want to make a point uh, backed with data, you can use data visualizations as well. Um, and geographic data visualizations are dealing with uh, spatial information. That's the uh, only difference. And as you probably all know by uh, co-design, we mean the design approach that actively involves users and stakeholders from the beginning of a project, informing the design decisions based on um, their thoughts and inputs as well. So um, why do we want to design data visualizations collaboratively? Um, there are a couple of reasons. Uh, first of all, the research about these topics um, are rooted in different disciplines since science uses data visualizations or cartography uses data visualizations. But from the um, research point of view, um, the more advanced visualization tools were mainly used by domain experts in, in a research oriented context. Um, now, as you are probably aware, it's uh, used by many different fields, by many different people uh, for many different purposes. Um, as you can see, it can be used uh, by someone from the public sector, or uh, we use it in our everyday life with our cell phones. Um, or there are public data visualizations who, which aim to inform public in a certain topic. So, um, back in the days, how, I mean, still, there are many established methods of designing, in terms of process, designing data visualizations. Um, this is one of the most important ones, one of the most uh, well-established ones, the nested model, which um, basically nests different levels. The most outer level involves the situation, uh, which can be translated as the use case, which context is this visualization uh, being used. Then, um, data and or task abstraction. So what types of tasks are needs to be done in order to uh, improve the situation, the domain situation? 
Then comes the visual encoding. Okay, we know the tasks. Uh, now, how are we gonna visualize them? Which, by which methods? Then, of course, since we are mostly uh, talking about interactive um, artifacts, then comes the algorithm. And the idea of uh, this model is if someone, something goes wrong in the algorithm phase, if it doesn't work, if it works slowly, it will affect the rest of it, everything. And vice versa. So, um, and it was mainly done by uh, a small group of people who went out there, understood the situation and came back and do the design and present it. Um, but now, as we said, um, there are much many people involved in the process. There are many people who are being affected by geographical visualizations right now. So um, how can we include more voices, more input, different perspectives in the design process is one key question. Um, and designing data visualizations collaboratively is uh, a little bit different than designing, let's say, um, an object that everyone uses every day. Um, it requires some certain um, expertise and data literacy. So that's one uh, challenge before we start everything. But um, today I will um, talk about these two cases, which one of them is called Istanbul City Walls and the other is uh, called the Hope Archive and the design process of these two. Um... So, before we dive into the process, maybe we can see the end result. This is a Istanbul City Walls um, web page where we have data related to the uh, architectural units uh, that are a part of um, the city walls. And the idea is we have many important architectural units. Some of, some of them are still standing, some of them are gone, some of them have um, some writings in them, and some of them are more important. Maybe they're an important gate, some of them are walls. So um, the idea of this map is to um, capture that information, which is very rich actually. So we have a, a photo archive when we um, talk about this web page, a very rich photo archive that involves different shots. And um, maybe, as I said, some of them include some writings. So um, the navigation has links to uh, certain essays about those uh, specific items. And um, everything is intertwined in terms of uh, if you are talking about a specific type, type of walls, then we can see that article. And, um, and again, it links with the map back. So when we go back from the essay, we can see uh, what is surrounding the Mevlevihane couple. And in the general level, we can see uh, what is standing. For example, here we can see most units are still there, where here we don't have as much. So this is the idea. This is um, the purpose of doing this was to capture the um, state and the heritage and the information around city walls for both researchers who are maybe not able to travel here um, 
to do their research, but also to public who uh, might not know the details or the historical aspects of uh, the city walls. And the second project we did uh, is called the Hope Archive, which aims to um, be this video archive, location-based video archive for different type of um, projects, civil projects um, like Düzce Hope Homes, uh, which aim to create housing uh, and public spaces for low-income tenants after the earthquake. So for each project, we can see uh, what type of themes it dealt with um, here, what type of methods they used, if, if they used participatory methods. Um, so we have a set of themes. We can see the links. We can see the locations of the projects if we want to learn more or watch their videos if they have any, watch their stories. We can do that as well. So these are the two uh, visualizations that I will mention today. Going back to the presentation. And um, there are a couple of more, maybe I can show at the end of pre uh, the presentation, but um, all of them tackles with uh, rich, inform rich data or um, data that involves different characteristics and visualizing them on the map. So, yes, as I said, the question uh, was how can we collaboratively design data visualizations? Um, are there any certain uh, challenges that, that are specific to data visualizations? How can we um, overcome them? And the work is, um, is a publication, uh, which you can go and read. But to summarize the general idea, um, we derived some um, ideas from different techniques that are more uh, rapid. For example, I'm sure you are, you are familiar with the design thinking method. Uh, which involves diverging, converging, diverging and converging again uh, in a fast-paced environment, finding innovative ideas for um, problems. So uh, when we talk about data visualization, when uh, a group comes around a table, Generally, it starts with the data, what data you have, uh, how can we visualize that data? Um, differently, um, in, in a design thinking workshop, it starts with the user or the problem um, and tries to build the rest from there. Similarly, this is uh, the workshop framework that uh, we did for these uh, visualization workshops. So as you see, the idea is kind of similar, but also different since we have data and we, we need to visualize it. But the first difference is uh, difference to the common practice in terms of data visualization is starting with the user. So uh, what happens when we start uh, with the question, who is our intended audience and uh, what are their objectives? So then move on to questions and tasks. So we have the audience uh, and they are asking a question to the system that we will develop, to the visualization that we will do. What do they ask? Then uh, from there, we again prioritize some of the questions then move on to the data to see uh, what do we have or what do we need uh, how does this link with the questions that uh, we want to ask to data then the last step is the visualization how can we visualize based on these data types 
and the uh, prioritizations we did prior priorly. That's the general idea. So some examples from the workshops we did with these two teams. For example, for um, the Hope Archive, the uh, targeted audience was public and non-governmental organizations mostly. But uh, here we have a more diverse, since this is the first uh, like ideation, um, we have some different types of users as well. We have local governments, museums, high schools, um, so in this phase, we basically um, try to generate ideas around the theme and then prioritize some of them based on our project goals. For example, in this case, um, the red hats are the prioritized ones. We have universities, students, collectives, local governments, and uh, we repeated the, these workshops with two groups. One, uh, one group involved more people from non-governmental organizations, and this is that one. And the other one was more project stakeholders. So another example um, from the City Walls workshop. Here, for example, we have just expert and novice users as, uh, as users and maybe tourists. So again, we uh, don't have to um, be super specific. They already had some idea about the audience and it's kind of uh, more uh, general than the previous project. Then um, questions. So uh, what questions do the user, users have to these systems? For example, for the um, City Walls project, these were the questions generated by the team. Uh, how were the walls constructed? How was it used? Or who built it? Uh, what are walls? Because, um, and as you can see, we have where the missing parts and remaining parts. So um, for some of these things, you can find the links between the end products and this very first uh, workshop we did. And uh, here we need to resolve um, ambiguity, meaning that if there is something that, it, that can be more ambiguous, like uh, I want to show the most important towers in the city walls, if we say something like that, then uh, through group discussion, we need to also define uh, what does it mean? So what makes a unit important? Is it if it's located high? If it's, um, is it like more old, uh, more sources uh, that that unit is mentioned? These types of things. For example, uh, at this point, I didn't know, but um, then I learned that gates are the mo most important things. So those are uh, also uh, visualized in a different way and more big in the last product. Again, for the Hope Archive project, we can generate some questions uh, which these user types will ask. For example, uh, if you are a collective or non-governmental organization, we can be curious about the funding they did uh, they found for different projects, or if, if we are a researcher or a student, maybe we are doing research on this platform. Or if you are local government, maybe we are looking for people who will uh, work on specific themes or topics, or uh, again, who are the people who are doing similar work um, to us which methods they used. These were the questions generated by the participants for the Hope Archive project. And um, then we come to data. So this can look different for different projects. Maybe if uh, this workshop is done in the very um, 
like in a very early phase, maybe you don't have any data. Then the discussion will be around what do you need to have, what, what types of data you need to collect to answer these questions. But um, if you have data, then you can use um, this phase to um, kind of sort that data with the group and prioritize um, that data and find links between the questions you asked. And that's what we did with the City Walls workshop. Um, we, because they already had so much data about these collected, about these architectural units, uh, which some of them were more, um, like only researchers would use them. So um, by doing something like this, by sorting and prioritizing, maybe based on even different user groups, then you know uh, what will you show in the interface and what will you visualize um, from that. So the idea is the, uh, this workshop was done um, with archeologists and uh, they are the one who are prioritizing and categorizing that information. Again, as you can see, there are many things. Um, for example, if modern sources, if there are any modern sources that mention this architectural units, if there's an inscription on it. So um, as you can see, they grouped and um, did some titles for the groups, which can be directly translated to the um, interface and the visualization. And lastly, the visualization part. So this is uh, where it gets a little bit different um, than any other design thinking workshop or ideation innovation workshop, because there's so much information already out there about how to visualize things. There, um, there are certain principles, uh, there are certain design patterns um, about visualizations. So in this phase, this type of setting needs to have someone who knows these links between different visualization methods and purposes. But this information is also out there. There are many uh, good guides which summarize this information, uh, which I can show a couple of them so that we will have some practical information here as well, at least some pointers. So one of them is the data visualization catalog. So. Here we can see different visualization methods which are commonly used. And if we search by function, then it comes to, uh, to the question of if we want to show relationships, um, comparison, or do we want to show distribution? And in this case, um, let's look what they have on location. So these are the common methods that are used for uh, visualizing location-based information. For example, we have bubble map here where we show a value with um, the area of a bubble. And here we have a small description and um, some challenges or some uh, points that we need to be careful about when we are using this method. And there are some examples and tools to generate this visualization. This is another one very similar, DataVis project. Uh, again, we have different functions and um, let's look at the bubble map again. And here in this one, we have more case by case examples so um, again, with other principles, there are many great sources like how to use color in visualizations or um, certain 
principles that are commonly used um, out there, but I won't go too much into that part. But if you want to, um, I included, I can share this later with you. I included the link where I'm collecting some libraries um, about different methods or different navigation styles. Because that, that is also important. Yes, we have patterns, but we also have more uh, collections about more different types of um, visualizations. Uh, and xenographics is kind of collecting those. Uh, so these are the more weird ones that are not commonly used. But again, everything comes back to the context and the need, the requirements for the specific case you're designing for. Again, um, we mostly look, and I also deal mostly with the dashboard style visualizations, but they're more um, story or message oriented visualizations as well, which uh, we have this uh, collection for. Um, so if you want to make a point, uh, communicate a message, then of course it's different than having a dashboard and all these different types of controls, which are more advanced, uh, maybe towards more expert users. Yeah. So going back to the workshop. So uh, with this workshop, we were able to define users' goals and tasks for the visualization in a very short amount of time. And uh, we were able to collaboratively take design decisions that reflect the values of different stakeholders. Again, we are uh, talking part about participation more in, uh, in these sections. Um, where the participants are giving their input the most, users and goals, questions and tasks and data. Um, yet we uh, had some challenges uh, and insights and observations as we are doing these uh, workshops. For example, uh, main, maintaining um, the focus for informi informing visualization design uh, was challenging, especially with the workshops with project stakeholders. So in this very confined uh, time, we wanted to just discuss about the visualization itself, but um, there were long discussions about project related, but not so much visualization related topics. And this happened mostly on the expert workshops. So um, for each project, we did one expert workshop and which involved the project stakeholders and one novice workshop, which involved uh, the potential users of the system. And um, as we are doing the, these um, workshops, we sometimes had early prototypes. But we observed that when we showed these early prototypes, it's, um, the discussion just um, was limited with the usability problems of those prototypes, which is not the uh, discussion that needs to be done. Uh, we were aiming to do more high level uh, discussions, but it kind of shifts the, um, the discussion when you show something, uh, even though it's not finalized yet. And some interesting points, for example, uh, for the expert and the novice workshop for the City Walls project included similar type of questions like, the stories uh, of the walls or uh, how were the walls constructed, etc. But the priorities, prioritizations were um, kind of different between both. 
And as I said, we had um, very diverse cases in terms of the amount of data and the complexity of data about uh, these projects. So we had to adjust uh, it to involve more methods. Sometimes we used card sorting if, if there are uh, many types of complex data and the ones and the people who uh, categorized that data were experts since it required that. So again, uh, there were some challenges uh, of organizing and moderating such a workshop. Um, first one deals with data. We, uh, you might have no data, missing data or too much and complex data. And again, the idea is to uh, adjust um, accordingly. And in terms of activity space, um, Funny enough, we did all these in, in a physical format. This was all pre-pandemic. And uh, again, this here, uh, the idea is to, um, um, to make everything visible for everyone. If there's a table, um, making everything visible. If, there's a, if you're using a wall, uh, making sure that everyone has access to uh, the post-its if they're using that. So uh, when we are uh, uh, prioritizing the information or the input, um, that uh, became kind of complex after a point because we didn't know why they were prioritized. So after the first workshops, we did the small uh, tags, which indicated if, um, if that specific input was related, relevant to the project, if they were found interesting or feasible, which in our case was important as well. and the links between these different phases. For example, uh, the first workshops were more linear for us where we had first discussed the users, etc. cetera. Uh, but the other ones, which were more smaller, uh, we showed the links by clustering uh, everything around. For example, here we have a user type, here we have questions, then he here we have data related to the questions. So uh, it was, as long as it's clear for uh, the participants there and the facilitator, um, anything can be done basically. Color coding can be done. Here again, we have a subtle color coding where the pinks are the questions and the um, oranges are data types and this uh, yellow ones are user types. So summarizing uh, everything we were able to do, um, like have collect input in a short amount of time, but it was hard to uh, maintain the focus. You can see this, these prototypes uh, yourself. You can try them, provide feedback to us. And after these projects, there's, uh, I've included another one here, which deals with um, protest data. Okay, let's see. So um, this is a project of the Emerging Welfare uh, Project at Koch University, which you can find more information on uh, here as well. But um, what they did is they scraped um, different, the data of uh, different types of um, events and categorized them based on participant types, organizer types, ethnicity, or urban rural. And um, here, what you can do is you can filter or you can um, show 
which, for example, in this view, we can see uh, which what types of organizers uh, were there in different events. So again, we um, applied the workshop to this project as well and collected people people's inputs uh, about what should we have here. Even though uh, pie charts on maps is, is something to be, be cautious about, that was in this case, um, that was our, uh, a good solution for us. So we used that. So um, going back to the presentation. And lastly, um, I wanted to mention CityVis, which is a workshop and a competition for these types of um, projects which involve geographical data in generally urban settings. And um, they are also doing workshops for to share information, uh, like research about these topics as well. But if you want to see more uh, projects like this, um, you can go and visit here if you are involved in or um, you know someone who's involved in such projects, uh, you can attend, you can submit your work to this uh, collection. And if you're doing um, dealing with these topics in terms of research, uh, you can attend to the workshop, which um, I'm part of the organizing committee this year. And again, um, since this is more complex, deals with more complex data, we are uh, looking for new perspectives or something that is novel or critical or uh, something deals with qualitative data on maps. So how would those uh, things work? So this is my last point. And again, um, like the general uh, overarching message is, um, is including more voices in data visualization design uh, in a structured and meaningful and flexible way is crucial since many people are uh, affected by these artifacts. And um, if you want to reach out to me, you can um, use these channels. I can share more information about the projects or the workshop framework itself. And um, again, if you work around these topics, please uh, submit your work to CITIVIS. And this is the end of my presentation. If you have any questions, I can answer those or any comments. I just want to start with a thank you. Thank you very much for the very detailed presentation. And I just want to ask a practical question. They can read your thesis from Yoks Tesnakis, right? Um, I Yes. If not, it's on my uh, web page. Okay. Um, you can reach out to me, I can send it to you or... I'm asking because there are a lot of uh, aspirations here to become UX designers after graduation, so they might be interested in all this. Mm. Okay. okay. John, I have a question. Uh, I'm interested in data visualization, but um, I don't know how to get into that. Uh, I don't know if I should take a course or uh, I don't know. Uh, I am very interested in uh, this, but I don't know how to uh, grow my knowledge. Okay, so 
some pointers for you. Um, actually, data visualization has um, good communities online, uh, which you can find and join. And for example, one of them is Data Visualization Society, which is a Slack channel and a web page, and they do events. Um, they do discussions. So uh, one point of entry might be here where you will also get a sense of what people doing uh, in different places of the world. What can I do with personal project? Should I just try to... Um... Uh, share what I, I am doing or how can I make projects by myself <laughs> if I am by myself? Yeah, I mean, I, um, I kind of in, included uh, a guide for that involves this practical type of information. Uh, what can you do as in like which tools can you use or uh, like we are not uh, I cannot hear you uh, sorry Baku I did meet you in between and Damla was talking because it's very cold in there can you unmute yourself again oh, okay uh, uh, if I am not uh, doing a project about uh, some topics, I, I don't feel like I am uh, getting, I am challenging myself. So uh, I don't know if um, uh, I'm interested in uh, data visualization on um, transportation maps or uh, train maps. <laughs> Uh, so uh, I don't know if I should take one and try to recreate something, or I don't know how to start. <laughs> yeah, actually, that's, that's... Uh, Damla, in, on that note, I think by what Baku is trying to say that she actually doesn't know where to reach the data. To uh, work on maybe. Yes. Yeah, that's that's another question. There are many uh, online sources. Google itself has uh, a source google data sets i think it was called let's say that's uh, google data <laughs> let's google it <laughs> let's google it uh, data set research i think yeah so here for example you can uh, find some data about trains or transportation i'm not sure if we have um local data but um some some countries who adopt the open data practices have uh, portals where you can reach many different types of data turkey is uh, also TÜİK is the main source i guess TÜİK is the main source but uh, we also have open data platforms which which are done by local governments or, for example, if, if you want to reach data, there are some here. Again. Yeah, so data sources are all around, uh, actually, if you look for it. There are also APIs which uh, which derive information from online systems, for example, social media data, um, which are sometimes open to public use as well. You can research research those too. <clears throat> Thank you. Other points or questions?
I have a question about, you mentioned that you didn't really, I mean, you tried to involve people into creating the visualizations, but then the focus was skewed and they were like, basically judging the usability of the prototype rather than actually talking about the visualization aspect of it. So yeah. Why do you think that happened? I mean, when you, um, when you show something, anything that is visual, that, uh, that attracts the attention immediately. And um, I think that's, that's just uh, because of our, how uh, prominent our visual uh, detectors are. When we see something, we just comment on it. Otherwise, it was just um, free, free discussion around the table. Um, and they were ideating and when, see, when they see something set, because the design is set, it looks, looks a certain way, it has some certain um, things, then uh, they, cannot, uh, get, uh, con they cannot continue to ideate on that because they see it. Then they start to um, talk about the visual artifact, how it's not working most of the time. That makes a lot of sense, actually, because it looks so finished, I guess. Yeah, yeah, especially when it looks finished. I mean, yeah. this, this is a general problem about data visualization as well. When, uh, when you see something visualized, um, you tend to think that that's finished. That's the true information. That's something true, and that's something finished, which is not the case for many cases, actually. In industrial design, when we are doing such participatory research with mockups and whatnot, it's obvious that it's not finished. It's definitely not even trying to be a prototype. So it's a mockup. So that's an interesting challenge that I never thought about visualization myself. So, yeah. Okay, guys, any other questions? All right. I think there is not any other question. Uh, thank you very much, Tamla, uh, for making this very detailed and instructive, actually. <laughs> not just inspirational, but also instructive presentation <laughs> with all the cool resources that you found. I think it's going to be a valuable resource for our students as well. Yeah, thank, thank you for you. having me. Okay, take good care. And well, we are looking forward to the next, uh, your future projects as well. Thank you. Bye. Take care.